Governor Gavin Newsom wants to strip citizens of their right to put initiatives on the ballot. And we are filing a brief in the California Supreme Court this week to stop him. I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California, and we told you a few weeks ago about the shameful abuse of power that Governor Gavin Newsom is attempting to pull off uh, by asking the California Supreme Court to block a citizen's initiative from the November 2024 ballot. Now, those of you who've been watching this podcast for a while know that Reform California has been very supportive of a citizen's ballot measure. We collected tens of thousands of signatures to get this on the ballot as part of a million plus that were collected statewide by our coalition of tax fighting groups. But this is called the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative. And the pa California Taxpayer Protection Initiative would strengthen and protect Prop 13 by requiring honest ballot titles for any tax increases by providing a new definition of what a fee is to tighten up the definition of what a fee is so that politicians can't enact illegal taxes by simply calling it a fee, by making the increases in taxes and fees more transparent and accountable by having politicians actually vote on the fees and vote on the taxes, and finally, by requiring a statewide public vote if you wanna have a tax increase, and restoring the two-thirds vote locally for any special taxes. In other words, we're trying to limit the ability of state and local politicians to raise our taxes or impose illegal fees that are really taxes, but just described or disguised as fees. This is a very empowering measure. It's designed to fight back against the constant tax and spend ways of state and local liberal politicians in California that has given us the highest cost of living in the nation. So we put this uh, measure up for uh, a signature. We got a million plus signatures, 1.4 million actually to be exact, which means we followed the rules and we earned our right to get a vote on this initiative. Newsom is asking the Supreme Court of California to side with him and just strip voters of their initiative rights. Now we've had the right of initiative in California since 1911. It's called the progressive era back with Hiram Johnson, the governor back then. He was fighting special interests, the railroad barons. And he said, you know, we should be able to have citizens put things on the ballot that politicians refuse to enact on their own, but that the citizens like and the citizens want. One of the ways that we have an initiative process is the right to amend the state constitution using signatures. And what the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative does is it amends the state constitution, again, to make it harder to raise taxes. Specifically, the Taxpayer Protection Initiative amends and clarifies previous citizens' initiatives, like Prop 13 from 1978, the Howard Jarvis Initiative, or Prop 218 from the 1980s, or Prop 26. These initiatives that span 40 years, all were citizens' initiatives, and all of them relate to limiting how politicians can raise taxes on us. But now Newsom is saying, no, 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 no. Take it off the ballot because it's so extraordinary what they're doing that it constitutes an illegal revision to the state constitution, not an amendment, not an initiative. It's an overhaul, a complete, you know, dramatic change to our system of government. It would require a constitutional convention, which means the legislature would have to agree to it. It's a very conv convoluted process. This guy is a liar. Newsom is a liar. He's just trying to come up with a scheme, a scam, an argument the window dressing, to strip you of your citizens' initiative rights. And make no mistake about it, if this goes through, we will never be able to put an initiative as citizens on the ballot again in California. Because these asshat politicians will come around and say, well, I don't like that initiative, so I'll call it a 
dramatic change to how things are done. And therefore it's a revision, illegal revision. Hey, court, you agree with me on that? Let's, let's, let's not let these guys uh, vote on this. So it is an assault on our direct democracy rights in California. Um, so we filed uh, a brief in the uh, Supreme Court. Uh, and here's my brief. I actually wrote it myself. I'm not a lawyer, but I did sleep at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Uh, I just know a lot about initiative rights. I know a lot about um, uh, the the history of the Prop 13 movement. And so I, I know that we have other great lawyers as part of our coalition. The best lawyers, Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. By the way, chip in a contribution to them. They do great work. Um, but the best lawyers that are making an argument out of case law. I decided to make an argument by showing the Supreme Court of, of California a laundry list of citizens initiatives that all amend the constitution on taxation or in some other respect uh, and all constitute a simple amendment to our constitution, not a revision. So I start out by saying, you know, reform California, um, help collect signatures. We are a party of interest. Uh, we're asking the court to deny Newsom's emergency writ of mandate in the case, which means don't let him have the what he's asking for, which is take the initiative off the ballot. So here is the petition, why the petition should be denied. Decision by this court to remove the TPA Citizens Initiative, Taxpayer Protection Act, uh, from the ballot would facilitate an abuse of power by state politicians and would irreparably harm and eliminate constitutionally protected rights of citizens to place initiatives on the ballot to check the power of their government. I remind the court that citizens have a clear right of initiative since 1911. And I like this line here. Petitioner claims, Newsom claims to be concerned about the harm uh, to the integrity of the state constitution if the initiative passes. To the contrary, the only harm can come to the state constitution is if the court sides with Newsom and strips us of our rights. Um, I talk about the precedent that would be uh, 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 set here uh, to eviscerate our rights. So let me respond to Newsom by making these arguments. He says that it's a revision to the Constitution because it's so dramatic a change. No. First, the initiative is very similar to Prop 13 and other initiatives in the past that were readily allowed and were accepted as legal and absolutely proper and not revisions. So, for example, Prop 13 required increases in taxes to be adopted by not less than two-thirds of the members of the legislature and by a vote of the people in certain cases. Prop 218 said that it has to be a two-thirds vote. It also contained changes to the definition of what a fee is. Prop 26 in 2010 clarified what the definition of a fee was. All three of these initiatives were legal and deemed appropriate by the courts. The notion that this refinement to how we vote on taxes and honest ballot titles on tax measures. It's nothing more than amendments to these existing initiatives, nothing grand or, 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 or unique. We're clarifying Prop 13. We're clarifying Prop 218. We're clarifying Prop 26. If all of those were legal and this is a clarification initiative, this is legal too. Um, I also point out that there were other initiatives that Newsom supported that were more dramatic in changes. So for example, Prop 20 that Newsom supported in 2010 stripped the legislature of the power to draw districts and appoint an independent commission. You're basically taking a massive legislative power away from the state, the state legislature. That wasn't deemed a revision. I would say that that's on par with the Taxpayer Protection Initiative, if not arguably more uh, onerous. Or Prop 25 that reduced the number of votes required in the budget process from two thirds down to a mere majority. That takes away checks and balances. That's a big revision to our system of government. Look, it's not like the Taxpayer Protection Initiative changes our system of government from districts and a legislature to a parliament, parliament and, and appointing a prime minister. We're not doing that. We're making it harder for politicians to raise taxes by establishing certain thresholds and rules. Newsom says that it um, enacts the, um, or Newsom says that th this initiative contains sweeping changes. So first, ballot title requirements 
are simply refinements to what Prop 13 and 218 require in terms of putting things on the ballot. We say, okay, if you're going to put it on the ballot, you have to describe it as a tax increase. You have to use the words tax increase in the description. That's not a revision to the Constitution. That is an, a building upon and, and clarifying Prop 13 and 218 as it relates to ballot requirements. Newsom says that when we uh, define what fees are, that we're stripping the uh, uh, executive branch of the ability to, to charge fees. We've already done that. Prop 218 and Prop 26 already regulate whether the executive branch can set fees and under what, what conditions they can do fees. We're just tightening the definition in Prop 218 and Prop 26. We already regulate the notion of fee setting. We're just becoming a bit more clear about it because politicians have gotten around those definitions in recent years. Public voting requirements. Newsom says, oh, by requiring a statewide vote on tax increases, which we require under the TPA, any tax increase statewide, like the gas tax or the car tax, would have to go to a vote of the people, not just of the legislature. That somehow that is uh, a revision. Or that the two-thirds vote requirement of special taxes at the local level that the Taxpayer Protection Initiative establishes or reestablishes is somehow a revision. No. Prop 218 already requires a two-thirds vote. The, the courts found a loophole. We're just closing that loophole and reestablishing two-thirds. So no, no revision there. We're restoring what Prop 218's interpretation was from the get-go. And in terms of a statewide vote, what we're simply saying is that because the, um, the uh, elected officials have uh, lied to us on the ballot, that we believe a statewide vote is necessary to check the politicians uh, and their two-thirds vote requirement. We're simply saying, why not do a statewide vote by the public on a statewide tax since we're already doing it for a bunch of other tax categories? It's just adding another category of the type of taxes that have to go to a statewide vote. In terms of uh, a, a vote on fees, we require a majority vote of the legislature on fees. The governor says, this has never been done before. We've never voted on fees before. Well, that's a lie. Um, first and foremost, uh, the state legislature already votes on fees because fee-based revenues are included in the budget for each state agency and it goes through the annual budget process. The legislature already votes to appropriate and allow for revenues that are fee-based. They're already voting on fees. What we're requiring is that they vote on the amount and methodology of each component fee, not just the overall revenue, but what are the, the actual fees individually themselves. It creates a level of accountability and transparency. Also, the legislature has already delegated fees to the executive branch uh, and, and manipulated what the uh, executive branch can do. For example, Assembly Bill 205 mandates the Public Utility Commission uh, change its fee structure on electricity rates to use your income, income-based utility rates. This legislature and Governor Gavin Newsom are guilty of doing the same thing that they say we're doing, which is regulating what the executive branch can charge in terms of fees. Another one is SBX1, SBX1-2. That's where the legislature told the Energy Commission of the state of California to enact an energy tax, an oil profits tax. They delegated to the administrative state. They instructed the administrative state would have to charge the fee. Again, they have shown that they're willing to have a legislative role in the setting of fees. So we're just saying, fine, the legislature should be required to vote on each fee so that the people can hold their elected representatives accountable for what fees are being charged. The bureaucracy is always used as the shield to keep politicians from feeling the heat from, from the setting of these fees. I want the politicians to be accountable for the fees that they're charging. Uh, and finally, uh, we do say that uh, the um, initiative does not impair local or state functions. Newsom laughably claims that if we don't raise taxes in California, that government will cease to exist and we can't function. Absolute nonsense. The reality is this, the only impairing on essential functions happening in the state of California is that the high level of taxation by state local politicians is impairing the function of, of families because too much money is being taken away from them. 
And so I point out the fat in the state budget and how uh, we certainly can survive on the highest existing tax rates in the country. We already have the highest tax rates. So if you say that you can't live on the highest tax rates while other states provide basic functions, bitch, please. On top of that, this is a state government that just gave out a bunch of goodies to illegal uh, immigrants. Free health care, universal basic income, free legal services. Don't tell me that you need all this extra tax revenue because you're, you're, you're so you know, thin on resources. This is a state that doesn't focus on the core functions of government. Oh, no, no. They're doing all sorts of other lavish expenditures outside of that. And so, um, no, it does not impair functions. Prop 98, by the way, mandated uh, almost half of our funding in the state budget would go to education programs to the limitation of other functions of government. And yet Newsom supports that. So do the Democrat legislators. That wasn't deemed as an impairment of state functions. Heck, it put half of our state budget on autopilot. No such argument was made there. And so... Our initiative pales into comparison to those other initiatives that were allowed to be enacted as amendments to the state constitution and were not deemed to be revisions. Look, the weight of our experience with, with citizens initiatives, the weight of precedent, case law, all argue that Newsom is a liar. Newsom is wrong on the law, that this is nothing but window dressing, is nothing but a scam, and that voters should be allowed to vote on the Taxpayer Protection Initiative in November. So we filed this uh, initiative um, argument. We are um, awaiting uh, a decision from the California Supreme Court, um, but uh, we're going to keep you updated on it. I, I expect that we will prevail because a first-year law student would agree with our point of view here. But we've we've got a lot of hurdles to pass this initiative. And so I'm urging you to go online to reformcalifornia.org. Go to reformcalifornia.org. It's super important that you go to that website and check out our Stop the Tax Hikes campaign. Um, share that page. It has more information on the Taxpayer Protection Initiative. Chip in a contribution because we are going to be up against the special interests from the Sacramento swamp who want to stop us from limiting their ability to tax you. Uh, so chip in a contribution there to that website, reformcalifornia.org, under the uh, Stop the Tax Hikes page. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.